there is a book that you can find on Amazon. It's called Lucy Libido. So Lucy Libido um, is the expert on oils in the bedroom and how they work with like a female body and a male body and everything like that. So this blue book, it's uh, kind of a shorter book, it's like 100, 150 pages, really easy read. It's very easy to understand and it's awesome. It includes recipes, it includes like doctor testimonies and different things like that. So you can find that on Amazon. The book that I will be using to help me with this class is her teaching book, which is the little black book. And it has really helpful tips on what to say and how to say it because this is my first Lucy class. So I'm really excited. Um, I do a class about hormones. And so that's, um, a little bit different. If we have time at the end, I can answer questions about that and add some things about hormone specific questions. So we will do that at the end. Okay. So who is Lucy Libido? The way that Lucy Libido was created, she formed a group of like 20 friends and they all experimented. And then they met back up like once a month to discuss their results. And then they took it to 20 more people and they experimented some more. And so she compiled all the notes from all the people and that's how she wrote the book. So who is Lucy? Lucy is all of us. Lucy is any woman of any age in any relationship. Lucy is still learning what works for her in the bedroom. So you may still be learning what works for you. Um, March was my birthday. I turned 32. But in January, my hormones totally changed. Like what worked for me in December, two weeks before, no longer was working. So you may be in that stage of life with me. And if you are, thank you, I'm not alone. Um, <laughs> you may be in a stage of life where you're still looking for Mr. Right or Mrs. Right or whatever. You may have married young and never been with anybody else. You may be an exhausted mama who has no energy whatsoever to spend with your hubby in the bath, in the bedroom or the bathroom. Um, yay, Jessica's here and I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm, I'm not glad that you're having the same struggles, but I am glad that you are here so we can talk about them. Um, you may have totally lost your sex drive after childbirth. You may not be able to remember the last time that you had sex. You may feel broken because you feel like you can't climax or it's really difficult. Um, you may feel like you can't keep up with your hubby's sex drive and it's like a chore for you now. You may feel just a little bit off because crazy hormones are going back and forth maybe because you had kids or you had a hysterectomy or you've had medication for so long or you've got some sort of disease thing going on down there and you know that it's messing up your hormones and you you feel off like it's just it's slightly different and wrong and you know it's not the way it's supposed to be because that's not how God created you. He didn't create you to be like that, you know. Exactly. That will do it, Tiffany. Exactly. Hi, Latricia. Welcome. Um, you may be in a place where your hubby won't even let you use oils on him. And that's totally okay. Like, it's going to take a while before he admits that there's something to this. Um, it took Tony probably three or four months before he stopped calling me a crazy witch lady. Um, <laughs> crazy oil lady and making fun of me and buying me like all kinds of t-shirts about potions and witchcraft and all kinds of things like it took a couple of months um, until he saw how they were helping me and how they were solving problems with our daughters that's okay um, you may be in a place where you do not find your husband or significant other physically attractive or you may be in a place where you don't feel attractive at all like you look in a mirror and you see nothing but negative things. And that's a mindset thing, which we can totally work on, by the way. You may need help with your libido. You may be just getting revved up and he's already done. Um, all of those people, all of these scenarios, all of this is what this class was made for. You are Lucy. I am Lucy. We're all Lucy. 
So this class is for all of us because we're all in different stages of life, but these are God's medicine. Like this is how we fix it and it totally works. Speaking from experience, okay? Okay, so step one. Um, every day, you're gonna stand up in the mirror, whether it's before bed, after bed, passing by a mirror on your way out the door. Um, there's a mirror in your vehicle, your car. Look in your mirror and say, I am beautiful. Even if you don't believe it, do you believe that you're beautiful? You can answer in the comments. Tell me if you think you're beautiful. Sometimes I find it helpful to ask my significant other what he finds beautiful about me. And it can be something that I never considered whatsoever. He told me that I was beautiful because I have a heart for helping others and I can't tell people no. And he can. And so he finds that beautiful in me because it's something that he doesn't have. Um, he says that I am beautiful because I have a big butt, <laughs> even though I don't necessarily like that about myself. And so in the mirror, I will sit in the mirror and look at myself and I will say, I am beautiful because my butt is on fleek or whatever. We have the power of life and death in the tongue and we sometimes have to say things before we believe things. So speak it, write it down. I challenge you to make a list of like three to five things that you find beautiful about yourself and say them every day for the next week. That's my challenge to you. That's your first homework of the night. Oh, Tiffany, that's so important to tell our kids, to tell our daughters, that they are beautiful, we cannot expect them to see all of these things on billboards and TV and all these posters and magazines of these super skinny girls and saying this is, you know, this is beauty if we don't tell them they're beautiful exactly the way they are. Because it starts now when they're young with their babies. And how we see ourselves is how they're going to see them. Because monkey see, monkey do. They don't necessarily listen very well. At least mine don't. But they will see what I'm doing. They will see how I'm talking about myself. They will see how I'm acting and how I'm carrying myself and how I'm proud of my big booty. <laughs> and so that will make them that way as well. And I find that very, very important for my kids. Okay. So step one is to make your list of three to five things of why you are beautiful. If you're with me right now or if you're catching the replay, you can feel free to drop it in the comments because that's going to be your first round of prizes. Tell me three to five things of what makes you beautiful. Okay? I am beautiful because I have a big booty. I am beautiful because I'm curvy in all good places. Got lots of curves. I got curves for days. <laughs> I am beautiful because I can move. I can run. I can jump. I have life. That vitality makes me attractive to my husband. Laying on the couch like a couch potato, he does not find attractive. <laughs> so those are three of mine. I am beautiful because... my eyes they are always moving they're always speaking even whenever I'm not because several times when especially around new people I am silent so my eyes are windows to my soul and I wear my heart on my shoulder and that makes me beautiful Tiffany is beautiful because she has a heart for others her she is beautiful because she has a wonderful mind She's beautiful because she's fluffy. She's beautiful because she's a mother. Motherhood comes with scars. I am beautiful because of my scars. And um, I tell, told my kids, my babies, whenever they were young, that my stretch marks on my stomach, they were um, battle scars. They were battle wounds. Because it was a battle to go through childbirth. 
Jessica is beautiful because she has a beautiful personality. She has a drive to get things done and she has a wonderful heart for helping others, taking care of people. Thank you both for sharing. I'm gonna write y'all down before I forget. Keep them coming if you're sharing. We're gonna move into step two. Um, top 10 reasons to have sex. That's fun, right? Jessica, you're going to have to make sure you give me your address. You can PM it to me so that I can send you your prizes. But we're going to earn some more prizes as we go. So you don't have to do that right now. Top 10 reasons to have sex. Did you know that having sex increases your immunity? Yeah, right? Crazy. Um, there's this thing called immunoglobin A, which is like when your body gets sick, it's like traveling through a couple of gates. And so immunoglobin A is like your first gate into your body, into your blood cells. And so that's your first line of defense of diseases and germs and things to get into your body. So if your body is fighting infections um, all the time, the more you have sex, that increases that first line of defense. So have more sex will equal less sick days from work. So have more sex, you'll have more money because you're not taking as many sick days from work. <gasps> Genius, right? Stretch marks are the first love letters for my kids. That's so true. And my husband better find those sexy. <laughs> um, number two, having sex increases your heart health. Those who have sex once a week were 45% less likely to develop heart disease than those who only had sex once a month or less. What? It's crazy. Um, kind of going hand in hand with heart health is number three, low blood pressure. Um, if you or your spouse or significant other suffers from high blood pressure, having sex is a great way to blow off steam. <laughs> that's a really, that's the wrong word phrase to use in this class, but already out there so uh, number four <laughs> having sex is a form of exercise did you know that you could burn four calories a minute by having sex boosts your heart rate strengthens your muscles helps with flexibility and balance um, number five having sex is a pain reliever PMS headaches muscle joint aches even I don't think I can say this word headaches that last for a really long time I don't think I'm supposed to say headaches. Pain in your head that lasts for several days. Um, there are studies that show um, that having sex helps with like the capillaries in the brain or whatever. Isn't that not crazy? Uh, number six, having sex reduces the risk of prostate cancer. Men who have sex 21 times a month have a lower risk of prostate cancer. Number seven, sex improves sleep. Prolactin is released, which helps you go to sleep faster, and oxytocin is the love hormone, and it helps you stay asleep once you get to sleep. Number eight, stress relief. Um, when you increase your pleasure in the bedroom, you are reducing stress, like those stress hormones, cortisol. You cannot produce cortisol and DHEA at the same time. Cortisol is your stress. DHEA is like relaxing. And so when you are having sex, your DHEA naturally increases and your cortisol stress naturally decreases because you can't produce them both at the same time. So increase your pleasure, increase your fun. Double mint gun. <laughs> Whatever. You can respond better to stressful situations the more often you have sex. So the more often you have sex, if you get in a stressful situation like an emergency or a crisis, your response time and your response thought process is going to be faster and more efficient because you're having more sex. Is that not cool? Boosts your libido. This is kind of crazy the way this works, but the more you do it, the more you want to do it. Kind of crazy how God created us like that, right? Um, the more you do it, the more blood flow you have, the more natural lube you are creating, the more enjoyable it is, okay? Number 10, improved bladder control in women. Like, this is a 
real thing. Like if y'all don't have babies, once you have babies, you lose bladder control like a lot. You can't go jump on trampoline. You can't be far from the bathroom for very long because when you got to go, you got to go. Um, so whenever you orgasm or if you're doing Kegel exercises, that's going to help you control your bladder so you can jump on the trampoline now with your kid. Like you can go have fun without worrying about it. You can control your bladder. Um, you still order stress away because <laughs> there are some situations when you will get stressed out that you can't just drop your pants and have sex in order to relieve that stress. Like if you're on a, you know, job on a 12 shift, 12 hour shift plumbing job or a nursing floor, you know what I'm saying? Like you still need stress away. <laughs> So why should you use oils instead of over-the-counter stuff like KY jelly or whatever? Um, most KY jellies and over-the-counter stuff, they have parabens. Parabens and um, added fragrance are big no-nos. Like those are huge in the toxic toxicity world. Um, stay away from them, okay? They're going to your body doesn't know how to naturally like absorb those chemicals because they're not natural in your body. Um, what is it that Lucy says in here? Let me find it. If you're using human hormones or human um, like DNA structures and cellular structures and micro organisms and things like that, Human is best, plant is better, synthetic is bad because of how our body can recognize it and then use it. Our body can recognize plant um, oils which come from plants. They can recognize those plants because of how similar they are because we're both living organisms. Synthetic stuff is not a living organism. Our body cannot recognize it, so it might impact a um, one specific outcome, but it's not helping your whole body, okay, or your whole mind, or your whole emotions. Erica, you are beautiful because you are compassionate, you are strong, you are humble, you are fun-loving, and you are a dynamite wife. Amen. That is absolutely true. And if Nathan doesn't realize how your worth is way more than rubies, then he's missing out. I wrote your name down for prizes too. Awesome. Okay, so a lot of over-the-counter stuff is petroleum-based as well. Like uh, Vapor Rub is made out of petroleum. Don't rub that on you. Don't rub that on your babies. Um, petroleum is bad, like it goes in your car. <laughs> you don't want that in your body, your body can't process it, okay? Um, the petroleum based ingredients that are in gasoline, are in vapor rub, they're also found in industrial cleaners. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you want to like put something inside of you that would be like taking a bottle of Windex and spraying it up there? Don't do that by the way, be smart. Don't use Windex down there. Um, oils are also like, they can help with those kind of things and lubing things up and getting things going, but they're natural aphrodisiacs. Using chemical aphrodisiacs, your body doesn't know how to process them. Um, most people will lose the desire for sex because of like surgery or medication. Like if you have a hysterectomy, your drive may, may go down. Um, physical and mental stress will make your sex drive go down. Depression, anxiety, both words that I'm not supposed to say, they will make your um, sex drive go down. If you have a hormone imbalance, vitamin deficiencies, they will make your um, sex drive disappear. Historically, oils have been used as perfume for centuries for this purpose to get females in the mood. Like you guys know our culture, you know that um, stereotypes, the stereotype is that men are always ready at a moment's notice and it takes women a while to get ready. That's the stereotype. If that's you, don't worry. This has been going on for thousands of years. Did you know that in Esther 2, Queen Esther put oils on her body for an entire year to prepare her to receive her husband? 
Did you know that? It's totally what happened in the Bible. Um, for six months, she used a specific blend of oils um, after she would bathe, and she would bathe all the time, and, and she would lube herself up on the outside and everything. And those oils that she used for the first six months were to eliminate um, negative thoughts, negative feelings, um, any diseases that she may have had lurking in her DNA that hadn't manifested yet because she was, you know, so beautiful and had everything going on and everything. Um, so they helped eliminate her emotional stress um, because she wasn't allowed to like tell anybody who she was. Like she had to keep herself a secret of who her family was and everything. Um, helped balance her hormones. They helped prepare her mentally for receiving the keen. And then the second six months was preparing her body to physically receive the keen. So that's history. Now we can get into the actual book. Ooh. Okay, 